Hello everyone, Dr. Anna Kabeca here with a dear friend of mine for a very special call. I am here with Dr. Sarah Godfrey. Hey Sarah, great to have you here. Hi Anna, hi everybody. Yeah, I'm so excited to share your new book coming out, The Hormone Reset Diet. Your book, The Hormone Cure, was a you know, big hit with my patient population. We, you know, our women just love, love, loved it, and the men were grateful too. So thank you. <laughs> Sometimes the men are the most grateful, I have to say. My husband always talks about that. Your life will be so much better if you understand your woman and what's happening hormonally. Oh, that is so, so true. And, and here, I love your book, The Hormone Reset Diet. I, I just thank you. Thank you so much for it, and thanks for getting out it out into the community. So let me just tell our audience, our Couch Talk listeners, our audience listening today, a little bit about your beautiful background. So besides Sarah being a dear, dear friend of mine, just a wonderful person, she is, I mean, she's just a wonderful person. She comes from the heart and she is here. She's a woman on a mission so that you don't suffer like she has and we have. And as a physician, Sarah Gottfried is a physician. She's also the New York Times bestselling author of The Hormone Cure, a book that our community has loved, and the newly released Hormone Reset Diet, the Hormone Reset Diet book that I want you all to get, and we'll talk about that today too. She graduated as a physician from the physician scientist training program at Harvard Medical School and MIT, a little bit of an overachiever. No. <laughs> In her elements, Dr. Godfrey completed her residency at the University of California at San Francisco. She's a board-certified gynecologist who teaches natural hormone balancing in her novel online programs so that women can lose weight, detoxify, and feel great. Uh, Dr. Sarah lives in Berkeley, California with her husband and her two daughters, and you can visit her online at sarahgodfreedmd.com. So super excited to have you here today, Sarah, and just to like connect with you because you're so busy now. We've missed girlfriend time and friendship yeah. time, and I've really missed that. I know you've been like absorbed writing this book and really getting out a lot of this information and just in a way that's so beautifully readable and you give these tools. So tell us after the hormone cure, why you decided to write, you know, to write the hormone reset diet book. And I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. You, uh, you just really touched me and I appreciate it. I, you know, when I talked about the hormone cure, I talked about how I had almost every hormone imbalance that a woman could possibly have. And I, I had 20 years of taking care of patients and I took their top seven hormone imbalances and created a protocol for how to, how to solve it. But what I didn't talk about, Anna, was weight. And I just want to get a little quieter here for a moment because I have to say behind closed doors, what I see women suffering with more than anything else is their weight, their body image, their body dissatisfaction, you know, feeling like you don't have a thigh gap or you don't like your arms, you don't like your butt, it's starting to sag. There are just so many ways that women are obsessed with their weight, maybe have some sticky relationships with food. And we know at least 80% are not happy with their bodies. And I, I know this to be true because I was one of them. I was right there in my mid thirties struggling after I had two kids. I couldn't lose the baby weight. I, I weighed about 25 pounds more than I do now. And I, I went to my doctor and the solutions that were offered were not at all palatable, you know, an antidepressant, a birth control pill. And why don't you exercise more and eat less? Cause it's a matter of simple math. And here, let me refer you to the local psychologist and relationship counselor. Exactly. Why don't you see a therapist for that maxed out basket case quality that you're talking about? And I, it just made me crazy. And then it made me angry because I realized, okay, millions of women are being told this across the United States, across the world. And it is exactly the wrong information. We are failing women. And so of course this is about something much bigger and maybe we can get into that in a moment, but you can't, you know, the Dalai Lama had this beautiful prophecy where he said the world will be saved by Western women. And we can argue about whether that's actually Western women. I'm not sure about that. But I, I have to say we can't save the world when we're obsessed about our weight and the number that's on the bathroom scale. What we need is uh, we need to get our hormones back in balance. So if I could 
edit the Dalai Lama, I would say the world will be saved by women whose hormones are in balance. So I left that doctor's office and I said, okay, we need a better solution here. And I came up with a program to reset the seven hormones metabolism. It's a 21 day program. It's, it's pretty quick and it really resets the relationship between the hormones in your body and the receptors for the hormones, which are kind of like a lock and key relationship, as you know, Anna. And that's, that's the motivation behind this book. Yeah, no, that's, it's such a personally driven mission that you recognize that so many of, I mean, that's what our clients come in talking about the reasons for their visits is, you know, I don't feel good about myself. I mean, something's wrong. Sometimes there's a monster in us in this perimenopause, menopause stage, right? Or is it just me? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I, I mean, you and I are both board certified OBGYNs. We hear the same thing every day. And and it's, you know, it's, it just pains me because I see so, so many women suffering needlessly over this particular issue. They feel like they, like their body is not theirs. They're not at home in their body. And I, I want to help women, you know, find the way back to that joyous, happy state where, uh, you know, you really feel like you can manage this. You can roll with the punches. Your hormones are reset the weight comes off and you just are really happy with your body. So that's, that's what this book is about. Yeah. And I, I love that you put it also for us in bite-sized chunks. I mean, you broke it down in bite-sized bite chunks. You gave us the reasons for each of your recommendations and why they're so important. And plus the easy things to do that we can be successful. So you made this a program not to frustrate us, not to... <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, how many programs have you read? And you're like, eh, I'm going to die trying, right? I'm going to die trying. And this isn't about that at all. This is totally recognizing that in the period, when our hormones are changing, or we need to you know, balance them back, but we have to keep our sanity. And so you, you give us all the tools in here to do that. So three weeks, seven hormones, and, you know, up to 15 pounds and, and, in those three weeks and the reasons. And now I love too, that you start with a really key hormone for women and that's about our estrogen dominance. But I also want to say that what are, you know, what so many people believe is that once you hit menopause, there's going to be an automatic weight gain that just keeps going until you're the, you know, the fat old lady. And we are fighting that because we know that doesn't have to be that way, but we need the right tools and we need the right way to do it. And I hate that there are so many smart people, you and I, right, amongst them, uh, smart people that were given the wrong advice and are following the wrong advice. So everyone listening, you know, this is the right advice from a very smart woman in a very easy way, common sense. You're a mom, you're a wife, you know, you run a business. And you're doing all this in a way that, that we can take it in, absorb it, and make it part of our lives. So thank you. And um, you wrote the first um, hormone that we're going to really shift is estrogen. So tell our uh, viewers why you started with estrogen. I started with estrogen because I think it's the most important hormone for women. It's you know the one that makes us feminine. It gives us hips and breasts and sometimes a little too much of the hips and the breasts when it's not in balance with progesterone plus a few other hormones, including insulin. So I started with estrogen because I think it's the easiest one to reset, honestly, and it may be the most impactful. So there's a few different ways that you can reset it. I'm happy to share some of those strategies with you now. But let me say a quick thing about the science. I appreciate that you like the way that I put these into bite-sized chunks there's actually science behind it. So yes, I'm a busy working mom and for other women who are really busy, they don't want some gigantic project to reset their hormones. They want something really simple and straightforward so that they can go about their day and also reset their hormones while that's happening. I found really interesting data when I went through the science and this is going back to when I first put this program together in 2008. So I've been teaching it now for seven years. And it's, it's really refined over time, but I found this interesting data that shows that you can reset your hormone receptors in 72 hours. So that's the reason for these three-day bursts. And each of these seven bursts is designed to reset your hormone and also to give you almost a diagnostic test for whether that's the hormone that is driving your weight gain or making you feel fatter than you want to feel. 
So when it comes to estrogen, what I advise women to do is to get off of the things that raise your bad estrogens, including alcohol and conventional meat. Now, during the rise of paleo, this is often uh, pretty controversial, but the point here is that when you eat out at a restaurant, unless you know where the meat came from, chances are it's chock full of hormones, usually about six different steroid hormones. And we want to reset the estrogen and the estrogen receptor. Another thing that is very helpful, I think, to get estrogen back into balance is maca. I'm a big fan of maca. So there's lots of strategies that I have in the book, you know, a very clear 21-day plan to reset these seven hormones and metabolism, starting with estrogen. And then can we geek out for one moment, Anna? Absolutely. <laughs> so I want to talk about the estrobilome. I feel like people have heard about the microbiome, you know, the set of DNA that belong to the bacteria that live in your gut. I think the next 10 years of medicine is going to be all about the microbiome. We're hearing so much about it. But there's a subset of the microbiome that controls your estrogen levels, and that's called the estrobilome. And you can definitely impact your estrobilome and therefore your estrogen levels with your fork. So that's what the meatless reset is all about, which is the first three-day reset in my book. I think that's fantastic. I mean, you said so many powerful things, but the big thing too is understanding that for women who are listening and struggling with their weight, understanding when we're talking about the gut, talking about the food changes, that we know that there's a, you know, bacteroides versus formiculides, you know, um, ratio that determines if we're going to be fat or thin. So we want to empower our bacteria, not a good, healthy gut bacteria. And we want to restore that and keep the bacteroides, you know, in full high dominance, right? Over the, over the other bacteria that can create that kind of storage mode or, or slow down our metabolism. And, and that's key. What's interesting too, is that you know, with this whole, with the whole microbiome, that it's with the probiotics we take, et cetera, what you're saying about the food choices we make, because the antibiotics and food choices in the food are just killing off our healthy gut bacteria. And, and that is why we emphasize, you know, we're, why we, I want our listeners to understand that is why we emphasize free range, organic, no hormones, no antibiotics is because, you know, example of farm raised fish. I had a client who um, ate farm raised at a restaurant, even though he asked, he's like, and they said, Oh no, it's wild caught. It was farm raised. And he had an anaphylactic reaction. He had a penicillin allergy. And so you think, Oh my gosh. So here are those antibiotics or our food is our fish farm raised are swimming in them. And it's so important to be really conscientious of what we are putting in our mouth and, and be stand behind the movement for organic free range and, and like for our food sources to be maintained in its most purest sense of the word. And I'm a big fan of buffalo meat though, because they've not been ever contaminated, which is such a good thing. So well, I, I, and I, I love this point because, you know, the, what we know with the antibiotics, antibiotics are fed to um, most of the livestock that's raised in the United States. And what was found, you know, it was given because they're in such crowded conditions, they were trying to keep them healthier than they would be otherwise. You know, they basically have pus kind of spilling out all over each other and they, they infect each other. But what they found with the antibiotics is that it also made the animals fatter. So it raised the amount of money that they could get per animal for their meat. And as you can imagine, that trickles down to you in a couple of ways. It's going to make you fatter, and it's also led to the rise of superbugs, which is what you've alluded to. And you know, the Environmental Working Group, for instance, found that about half of the meat in the United States is infected with these superbugs. The numbers are really high and pretty scary. So superbugs are these uh, bacterial, you know, they're, they're antibiotic-resistant bacteria that can really cause serious harm for people. And um, I feel like I'm getting on a soapbox a little bit here, but it's, okay. you know, it's, we just want to be aware of, of what's on our fork and we want to be developing that, um, that tactile sensitivity to really eat the foods that nourish us, that balance our hormones, that reset our estrogen and these other six hormones and metabolism. And um, we can't rely on our government to do that for us. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a great point. We are, we have the power, right? It's in yes. our control. We have the power. 
So I think that's a great thing. I also think it's neat the 72 hours because when we do detox, the intestinal lining regenerates in 72 hours. So it's like the hormone receptors clear in 72 hours. They do. So the data is stronger for some hormone receptors versus others. The ones that definitely can clear in 72 hours include insulin and also the estrogen receptor and progesterone. So those are the ones that I'm really focused on in these 72 hour chunks. But each of the seven resets are three days in length. And in aggregate, when you put it together for 21 days, you get this reset, especially for the hormones that take a little longer to do the job. Mm, yeah, great point. Let's, talk, let's also talk about insulin. You mentioned um, insulin is one of your, is the hormones. Can you list the, six, the seven hormones that we're... Oh, sure. Yes, so I'm going to go in order of what's in the book. So estrogen insulin, leptin, cortisol, thyroid, growth hormone, testosterone. Those are the seven hormones in metabolism. Fantastic. All right. So tell us the goals behind um, your insulin reset. So yeah. So the insulin reset, I call it sugar-free, going sugar-free, because you're getting off of sugar and artificial sweeteners. And it's amazing where sugar hides. I mean, you and I have been talking about this for a long time. Balsamic vinegar. I mean, it's just amazing how much sugar we're consuming right now. We've got you know, triple the rate of obesity among our children than we had 50 years ago. We've got such an issue with getting fat. And it's not eating fat that makes you fat. It's actually sugar, that eating sugar that makes you fat. So I, I get women off of sugar during the sugar-free reset. And this is the hormone that has the best data behind it. We know so much about insulin and insulin resistance, which is where you know, the hormone of insulin just doesn't quite fit nicely into the receptor anymore. The receptor is just gunked up. And so we want to freshen up that receptor again, and we can do that in 72 hours. So there's a few strategies for doing this. We start to dial in the net carbohydrates, which I think is very helpful because You've got to make sure that you've got adequate fiber that's important for insulin and also for estrogen. Uh, the fiber is especially good for the estrobilome, but then it also helps you stabilize your blood sugar. And what we found, Anna, you know, I'm not just saying I think this is a good idea. I've actually run 5,000 people through this program as beta testers, and we found that their blood sugar drops on average 20 points over 21 days. That's pretty amazing. Like, you know, it's hard enough to get people to check their blood sugar when they don't think they have a problem with diabetes. But especially women who are stressed out, maxed out, fatigued, can't lose weight no matter what, they tend to have a problem with blood sugar. So that's what we're addressing in the sugar-free reset. It's also, you know, for a lot of women who are sugar addicts, and I used to be one. I know what it's like to be a food addict and to be an addict to sugar. We know that starting with giving up the sugar can be kind of hard. And so I like to ease into it. And that's why I placed it as number two. I think that's fantastic. And plus, you, you know, again, just being conscientious of that. And once you're free of it, your you know, cravings for it go away. But talk to how important it is to eliminate the artificial sweeteners as well because of the relation to insulin and insulin resistance. And it's such a cruel joke. You know what I mean? It's it is such a cruel joke. I'm so glad you put it that way. You know, I can remember being 15 years old and tanning myself in the sun in the summer and drinking tab all day. Like I, I can, I, I wrecked my metabolism basically when I was a teenager, it just, uh, it was broken. And the idea with the hormone reset diet is that we're going to rebuild your metabolism. We're going to reset it by resetting these seven hormones. So artificial sweeteners, such as in TAB or in other diet sodas, or, you know, we, we find artificial sweeteners in so many different places right now. We found them in lubricants. In lubricants. Yeah, Amazing. I mean, aspartame and sexual lubricants. I mean, seriously, is nothing sacred? I mean, sorry. That, we def I think we need to do a whole other interview on that particular topic because it's such a good one. But it's, uh, you know, it's just amazing to me. I... I have a number of people in my family who are diet soda addicts. You know, they're trying to get thin. They've got this whole body dissatisfaction thing that we've been talking about. And they like to have a diet soda because it's, it's effervescent. It kind of picks them up. It gives them some energy. It feels like a treat, and yet it's zero calories. But the data shows that it may actually be worse for your metabolism than drinking the actual soda 
So I'm not saying drink the actual soda, I'm saying cut out both of them because the artificial sweeteners also can wreck your metabolism and maybe even be worse than table sugar. So we're just starting to learn more about this. You know, when it comes to artificial sweeteners, there's a lot of other biochemical badness, including it robs you of serotonin, that happy brain chemical that helps you sleep through the night and normalizes your appetite. So the idea here is just to stay off the artificial sweeteners. But you probably have something to add here, Anna, because you are so knowledgeable. I can't wait for you to write your first book. Wait, do you want to... Do you want to say something about artificial sweeteners well, too? Yeah, no, just keep them out of our lubricants. No use. Cooking. <laughs> but no, seriously, I, again, this is where I get so angry because smart men and women are thinking they're doing something good for their body by drinking the diet. And you know, you see even the diet Red Bull out there. That's like you said, those these are all another discussions. But it, it's just it's crazy. It's unfair. And I'm so happy to get this information out and that you have the keys and pearls in your book with the science behind it, because smart men and women need to know what we need to do to empower our bodies to restore our metabolism. We're not going to get, um, you know we're not guaranteed diseases as we age. And as far as the artificial sweeteners, the increase in pancreatic cancer and pancreatic diseases, and that connection is very worrisome as well. So again, going to what's whole and, and natural as much as possible and, and getting rid of that sugar. So uh, craving altogether because it makes us, you know, just insane with cravings as well. And, and we struggle with thirst and hunger because we Think that the artificial sweetener is going to or the the diet drink is going to really be a part of a healthy diet and it's not so yeah I love I love that you make that point so well and I would can we talk about one more hormone I mean we don't have time to go sure. through all of them but I love them all but cortisol you know how passionate I am about cortisol so let's talk about cortisol reset because cortisol interferes with our bonding hormone oxytocin and we've got to have that great you know play in cortisol and oxytocin. So let's, let's reset oxytocin and let's reset cortisol. Yeah. Well, you know, the sugar cravings, I think for so many women, they come from high cortisol. You know, most, uh, most women I know, and this is now, I don't know, 25,000 women that I've taken care of in my medical practice, their nervous system, you know, just kind of the control system for their hormones is just fried. You know, there's two divisions to the nervous system. There's the sympathetic nervous system that does fight or flight and the parasympathetic that does rest and digest. And most of us spend way too much time in that fight or flight part of the nervous system. And it jacks up your cortisol. It jacks up epinephrine, adrenaline. And we can become addicted to it. I was when I was in my 30s. You know, when I went and saw that doctor and he told me all the wrong things, I had a hunch that my problem was hormonal. I tested myself the next day and my cortisol was three times what it should have been. And I see this daily in my practice. It's such a common occurrence. So what I get people to do in the caffeine free reset, you can kind of imagine what's coming here is I get you off of your upper in the morning. And a lot of women run for cover when I say that they're like, wait, I don't get to have my coffee in the morning and you're going to take away my alcohol. Like that's how I function, but it's what's jacking up our nervous system. You know, we don't get the sleep that we need. And so then we get the coffee in the morning or the green tea or whatever caffeine is your favorite and it's our upper. And then we need a downer to kind of come down from, you know, being so jacked up. And so I've found in my practice that if you periodically get off of caffeine, I'm not saying you got to do this all the time, but once a quarter, once every six months, get off the caffeine for 21 days and you'll be amazed. I, you know, on average, I sleep about another two hours every night. I mean, it's, it just makes such a difference in terms of my hormonal balance. So that's what this particular reset is about. But it's, of course, it's deeper than that, Anna. It's, it's getting off of the foods that trigger your cortisol, including food intolerances like gluten and um, sugar also raises your cortisol and dairy, but it's also about mindset and about retraining your mind so that you've got, you know, that sense of expansiveness and, you know, kind of stepping into again with the Dalai Lama was talking about, you know, being able to really bring your mission forward, whatever that is. 
I love that, you know, and that you are addressing that area of our femininity, right? To step into, embrace the expansive, loving, giving, it's unlimited. The more we give, the more we have to give. And, and I think that's a great point. And as we love and, and do the things that we're impassioned to do, that's raising oxytocin, dropping cortisol, and physiologically, we're improving, it's, you know, just catapult the improvements we can make. And for our listeners to recognize that behavior is driven by physiology. So there's certain habits, et cetera, for sure. But a good percentage of our behavior, especially in the perimenopause, is looking at our physiology. How are we in balance? How are we, is our tank full? Are we running on empty? And are, you know, is our you know, foot to the metal all the time? We're just being driven and stressed and pressured. All those things increase in cortisol, plus all the inflammatory foods that you mentioned. And as part of the program, I love that you address yoga, walking, and the meditative exercises and bringing all Eastern Western practices that you put together so well into the, you know, into your book and the science behind it. So Sarah, just thank you. I'm going to encourage all our listeners to get the Hormone Reset Diet, Heal Your Metabolism to Lose Up to 15 Pounds in 21 Days. So by Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who you've listened to here, and you're just going to want to embrace all this information. I do have to add one little naughty of mine in here, because as I was reading through the summary, I was looking at all the hormones and Oh, great. You know, the seven hormonal resets, you know, meatless, sugar-free, fruitless, caffeine-free, grain-free, dairy-free, toxin-free. I'm like, yay, there's no alcohol-free on here. And then I read the first chapter. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I knew she'd get me. No. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so sad because you and I love to share a glass of wine. And the good news is I'm not saying that wine is bad or alcohol is bad. It's just that it is proven over and over again to raise your bad estrogens and it also raises your cortisol. So I think it's so helpful to get off of it for 21 days. It just makes such a difference in your sleep, in your outlook, your hormonal balance. You're going to reset that estrogen. The other thing that I think is important about alcohol is that it's, it blocks your metabolism. It breaks your metabolism. And this has been well shown. So even a glass of wine at night will slow down your metabolism by up to 70%. Now that's for 24 hours, but if you're having a glass or two every night, you can really see the pounds start to add up over time. So I know women love it as a crutch and a transition and a way to, you know, kind of ease into their home life. This reminds me of a beautiful Chris Northrup quote. Can I share that with our listeners? Because it's so yeah. good. So Chris Northrup said something that just made me feel like, oh my gosh, does she have a webcam in my house? Because I feel like she's talking directly to me. Chris Northrup is one of our mentors. And um, I first learned about her before I went to medical school. And I wanted to be like her because she just totally reclaimed women's health and helped women you know, get embodied in a way that I think is extraordinary. She's a pioneer. And she said, you know, women are expected to be wholly in one place, usually the workplace. And then they're expected to be wholly in another place, usually their family life, with absolutely no model for wholeness. Mm -hmm. And unless you have an ego strong enough to integrate the two, you will develop this hole at the center into which develop addictions like food addiction, grazing through the day, drinking a little more alcohol than is necessarily good for you, or becoming a workaholic. And I certainly found this to be true. I think cortisol is kind of the main culprit there. Oxytocin definitely helps. But the idea is that you, you really want to um, learn to love what's good for you. And I can't tolerate alcohol the way that I could in my 20s and 30s. It's just true. Yeah, no, absolutely. So well said. You know, and again, it's about balance and, and permission to love ourselves and full acceptance so that we can continue to be the expansive beings that we are with our energy just igniting further and further. Every day we get, it's the more energy we can give out in the world and more energy for ourselves and for our loved ones, that feminine energy that is so gorgeous at any age. And I would say that, you know, I love when I see a couple, you know, old wrinkly crinkly walking hand in hand, you know, and they're ignited and they're working, doing things together that they're passionate about. And I totally want to be that. And so 
looking at how we empower ourselves with the right information, the wisest information that we have with the current science information, which we're not going to get from our local medical system for 20 years, honestly, 10 to 20 years at least, that this, to have this in our hands is really a gift. And I want to thank you so much for bringing this out. And it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy and it is so, so valuable, so valuable. And I want to encourage all our listeners to get the Hormone Reset Diet. Sarah, what website do they go to to get that to? HormoneResetDiet.com? HormoneReset.com. We've got a bunch of bonuses that we will reward you with when you submit your receipt. And we are, you know, Anna, it's just so awesome to be with you. I I love hanging out with you. It raises my oxytocin, even though we're across the uh, country from each other. And it's just, it's awesome to be with your listeners as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to all our listeners, be sure to get the Hormone Reset Diet book and, and just listen. You've got a lot of information that was poured out by Dr. Godfrey today and just start taking these little, these few little steps. We'll see you next time. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye.